Well, hello again. Thanks for joining us here today. We have a moment to spend in the Word of God together and to offer a prayer. It's my hope that we'll find encouragement as we come before him, which I think is possible every single time. We come before a God who loves us and cares for us and reaches out to us, even as we reach out to him. And he's not hard to find. He's a, uh, the scripture says he sticks closer than a brother. He's just a breath away. And so as we call on the Lord, we can trust him. As we yield our hearts to him, we can trust him to come and surround us with his goodness and his love and help us to uh, overcome whatever it, is, whatever it is that the day brings. All this week, we've been taking a look at how Jesus told his disciples to pray. It's a model of prayer that we have come to call the Lord's Prayer. And it began with us praying, Father who are in heaven, hallowed be your name. And then we followed that with uh, a request, Lord, for your kingdom to come, your will to be done right now on earth as it is in heaven. Yesterday, we asked the Lord to give us today our daily bread. And today we pick up with verse 13 here in Matthew chapter 6, the next portion of the prayer, which simply says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Most translations now use that term debt and debtors. When I grew up, we used to pray, Lord, uh, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And both translations are technically correct. That idea of trespass, those things that we do that are in the wrong, we want the Lord to forgive those. And uh, even as we're choosing then to forgive those who wrong us, But um, this other translation that is now much more common and technically probably a little more accurate, Father, forgive us our debts. That it's not just the things that we do wrong, but our sins, our lack, our weaknesses put us in a, um, a position of owing. It's a hole that we dig that uh, becomes deeper than we can climb out of. That's the sin that causes that separation from God. It's a debt more than we can pay. I don't know about you, but if someone were to come and pay all my debts, I would love that. I've got a little bit of school loan that I'm working on. I've got some credit card debt. Um, I'm much better about those things than I used to be in years past. I'm not completely free of them today. And it can be a burden can't it? All of us that have dealt with debt in our lives, we know the burden of that. The Bible says that the borrower is servant to the lender. And often, it's very common in our culture, we end up buying things before we can pay for them on credit. But then our money comes under the control of those bills. God wants to see us free of that. I believe that with all my heart. But it's not just true financially. Our sins do the same thing. Our misunderstandings, our mistakes, our uh, decisions that we make that come from fear or hurt or anger also put us in a position of, of, of being in a hole where we can't get out on our own. And yet God is merciful. He's kind. And Jesus calls us to bring uh, our situations before the Lord and to call on that mercy. That's why he tells us, Father, to, to pray, Father, forgive us our debts. It speaks to God's heart to bring us freedom, to release us from the burdens that we're in. But then Jesus does something. The prayer doesn't stop there. The sentence doesn't stop there. He says, as we forgive our debtors. And so there is this corresponding relationship between the forgiveness we're asking for and the forgiveness we are meant to give away. By the way, everything that God gives us, we're meant to give away. He gives us love that we would give love away. He sustains us with joy that we might lend that joy to someone else. He gives us strength to overcome in the moment that we might help others be strong as well. He gives us peace that we need so that we can give peace away. Everything the Lord gives us He wants us to spread to someone else. And so we pray, Father, forgive us our debts. We're looking for his mercy. We're looking for his grace to come into our life, the strength that we need to be washed free of sin and be lifted from the burdens that we face so that we can also do that with others to the same degree that we would forgive those who owe us. 
course, of course, the ultimate example of that we see in Christ himself, Jesus who never sinned, who was accused unjustly and crucified without cause from an earthly standpoint, who cries out to, the, to, uh, to his father as the soldiers are driving the nails into his hands and feet. He cries out, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. There's a sense in which they knew exactly what they were doing. These were experts at crucifixion. And yet Jesus recognized that they themselves were being controlled by their limited knowledge, their own fears, their own expectations, their own guilt, their own anger, and that his plan ultimately was to see us all set free from that by dying for our sins on the cross, paying the price that our debt of sin created. He gives forgiveness. How can he do that? Who's going to make it right in the end? Well, his father will. The judge of all the earth will come and make things right again. And of course, at the resurrection of Jesus, we see that happening as our crucified Lord is brought back to life and how he gives now life to all who put their faith and trust in him. There are people that owe us because of misunderstanding or mistake or just outright attack, whether that be physical or emotional or some other way, because of their own hurts and sins and fears and and anger issues. It happens because we are a broken people in need of a Savior. But you can trust there's a Heavenly Father who loves us and who is determined to make all things right in the end. And if God is making things right, then we don't have to demand that people make it right. We can choose to forgive. And that's what he calls us to do. And he connects the forgiveness that we receive for ourselves to the forgiveness that we give away to others. Are there people that you need to forgive today? I understand how that can be difficult. We experience pain and we think it's what they've done is not right. And that's exactly true. It's why forgiveness is such a gift and becomes so important. And the truth is, when we forgive others, It doesn't just help to set them free of their burdens. It frees us from the burden of bitterness. It frees us from the weight of anger and unforgiveness. Isn't God wise? It's why he calls us to pray these kind of prayers. Today, we're going to join our hearts together. Even as we ask for forgiveness for ourselves, can I ask you, are there people that you need to forgive as well? where life would be so much better for you and for them if we would say, Father, we forgive them this debt. I'd like to invite you to do that today. And we get to that moment, just pray out loud with your voice. Say, Father, I forgive so-and-so and name them. And we're going to ask for his help to do that today. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you are gracious and kind toward us. You are the God who sees all. And in the end, you will make it all right again. That doesn't mean that everything that happens in our life is all right. Lord, we go through real heartaches and pains and disappointments and hurts and frustrations and fears. And Lord, we sin because of those things. We are sinned against because of those things. But even as we ask you for cleansing for the debt of sin that we owe today, Father, we also pray to release those who owe us. So in the name of Jesus, we choose to forgive. In fact, say it out loud right now. Lord, I forgive, and then say their name. Lord, I pray that you would bring to us freedom, life, that you would lift the burden of bitterness off of us that we would experience your grace anew, that we would know your mercy for ourselves as you forgive us our sins. Thank you for giving us the strength and grace to forgive all those around us. Cause your love to be evident in us now and in the days to come. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Oh, it's good to get free of your debts, isn't it? Let God wash you clean today of your own sins. Let him use you as an instrument to wash others clean as we forgive them their debts as well. 
There's always new life to be found in the Lord. That means there's great reason to be encouraged today. You have a Heavenly Father that loves you, and He's leading you, and He's bringing freedom into each and every single one of our lives as we simply do what His Word tells us. Thanks for being with us today. If you're part of our Friendship Village family, you can watch these videos on Channel 900 at 8 o'clock in the morning, 4.30 in the afternoon, or again at 8 o'clock in the evening. You can also find them on the internet on YouTube. Simply type in Encouraging Words with Burt Campbell, and you'll find a whole host of videos there now. God bless. Tomorrow we'll continue with the final part of the Lord's Prayer. I look forward to seeing you then. Have a great day.